Hello and welcome to our market alert video for the week ended March 18, 2022. And uh, we have a lot to cover, so I'm going to wish everybody the very best weekend. I hope everything's coming up roses for you. And now I'm going to dive right in. <laughs> so one of the questions that I'm being asked quite a bit uh, lately from uh, viewers of our video and uh, listeners to the radio show and our podcast is, you know, should we sell now? So I want to give you the case for why that may be a good idea, but certainly you would need to visit with one of our retirement planners before you make any decisions with regard to that. So right now what we have is a situation where the Federal Reserve is looking at either letting inflation run, which if they did that, then potentially that would create stagflation, which is the inflation gets so high that the economy starts to stagnate. And so you have inflation and stagnation at the same time. And that is stag stagflation. Uh, or they could fight the, the beast and uh, raise interest rates. And that potentially could cause a recession. And therefore, that would be bad as well. So basically, what we're looking at is a recession, which economically speaking might be considered the flu, versus stagflation which might be considered to be cancer. So the Federal Reserve is looking at, do we allow the cancer to get worse or do we potentially induce a recession and, and get rid of the potential of that stagflation? Obviously the decision's easy when you think of it in those terms. So uh, we have precedent for what's going on right now. What we have is Paul Volcker back in the early 80s, who was the Federal Reserve Chairman at the time, and he faced very similar situation as today. High inflation, similar to what we have right now, and also a spike in oil prices, just like we've had right now. Uh, so he was facing a lot of the very same issues and challenges to the economy that we're facing today. Now, of course, he didn't have the war in Ukraine, so that adds a whole nother dimension to the whole thing. So back then, what Paul Volcker did was he showed us the antidote. And what he did was he raised interest rates and he kept on raising them until inflation subsided. He induced a very severe recession. And uh, that was very painful for many people at the time, but that was the bitter medicine that we needed to take economically to be able to get rid of inflation. By 1983, it was past us, but we had two back-to-back -back recessions. It was They happened twice during that period, which is interesting. Um, and of course, a bear market that went with it. The stock market went down significantly during that time. So those are the risks that we face right now. And, and basically, if you think about that 70% of our economy is our consumers. And if you think about the consumer now looking at potentially, you know, $1,000 a month for their grocery bill, $150 to fill up their gas in their car, three or $400 a month to heat or cool their home. You, you start looking at those kinds of expenses and the amount of discretionary dollars that are still available for that consumer are reduced significantly. And since they drive our economy and they drive profits of our, our uh, corporations and their stock prices are usually a reflection of their profits, if profits go down, stock prices should go down as well. So we could be facing the same sort of thing that happened with Paul Volcker back in the early 80s. So what should you do about it? Well, there's a lot of downside risk in our view. Uh, and uh, potentially, you know, even if we have peace in Ukraine, that is not going to cure the, what's going on in our country. In fact, we're hardly affected by what's happening in Ukraine. So that's the, the key thing to remember is that the war is interesting and we're all kind of looking at that because it's making the headlines. But what's going on here is very little. It's, it's, it's going to be here after the war is over and hopefully that will happen soon. So. The downside risk in our view is far greater than the upside. And if you're over 50, if you're retired or retiring soon, we think it's very important for you to really look at how much risk you're taking and how to protect yourself, etc. So what I would encourage you to do is go to our website, rpoa.com. And what I encourage you to do also is to uh, visit with one of our retirement planners and let them help you to walk through all of this and build a plan to get you through your retirement uh, and, and uh, have peace of mind and have your money last as long as you do. So thank you for watching this video and uh, we'll talk soon.